Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Last week I showed you how to download some free software and start to create your own photographic journal or notebook. This week I want to show you how to enter information into that journal. After all, we want to be able to populate it with things about our photographs or about the darkroom, about processes we use and so on. And we also want to be able to link them all together. Specifically, we need to enter photographs as well. We're going to look at a couple of ways of how we can do that. So let's jump on the computer and start doing it now. So welcome back to the computer. Here we are, as I left you last week, we had created an index tiddler and in it, we had created two links. Let me show you those two links, go into edit and links were just words that were surrounded by double square brackets, opening double square at the beginning and closing double square brackets at the end. These are square brackets, not regular brackets. Here's a second link, look, dark room surrounded by double square brackets again. So this created two links. We also saw how we can create new tiddlers. Let me delete this one and recreate it again. So I'm going to drop this menu down here. If you click that, it's a menu. Lots of interesting things here. We're going to look at the delete. So we're going to delete this and it's gone. It's deleted. It's no longer inside of our photography.html file. I'm going to create it again. So let's go plus. We're going to go plus to create a new tiddler. It opens up a template to create new tiddlers. I'm going to call it Castle Rig. And I'm going to leave it empty. Click the tick box and that's it created. It's automatically saved as well. So that's great. We ha have the ability to create these new tiddlers, but at the moment, they're not really very useful. We're not putting anything in them, are we? Let's see how we can actually add a photograph to this Castle Rig Tiddler. Now, I went to the Lake District and the lighting is always superb in the Lake District. I love that place for photography. And I took a lovely picture of the Castle Rig Stone Circle. And let's pull it up on my finder here. Here it is. Uh, you can see it's beautiful. The lighting was just gorgeous that day. The rain had just finished. You know, the best times I find for taking photographs, the best photographs I've ever taken, have always been when the weather has changed. Isn't that interesting? When the weather changes from sunny to rainy, there's this time in between those two states where the lighting is always spectacular. And that's when I get my best shots. So that's food for thought. So here's my original Castle Rig picture. And if I look down in the information, it's 3000 plus pixels wide by 2000 pixels high. That's a big picture. I don't want to put such a big picture into the actual photography.html file. So I made a smaller version, an 800 pixel wide version, which is much smaller in size. Look, it's only 230 kilobytes. I'm going to put that inside my photography journal. So here's the Castle Rig Tiddler here. I'm going to open it up in the editor and I'm going to drag and pull this finder down here so we can see what happens. And I'm going to drag this file into that and look, it says drop it now. So I'm going to drop it there. When you drop it in a Tiddler, this import dialog box comes up and it's asking me to confirm that I really do want to import this image. There's the name of the image. I can cancel or import. And I'm going to say import. Yes, please. Bomb. It doesn't seem to have done anything. I can't see the picture, but it's come up with this text. If you look at this closely, it's got two square brackets at the beginning and two square brackets at the end. So this is going to be a link. But inside the first two square brackets, this word IMG has appeared. And inside the next brackets is the name of the Castle Rig file of oh, Castle Rig 800 JPEG. What it's done is, it's actually imported this file into my notebook journal. And I can tell that by going over here to this more menu, clicking that down and selecting types. 
And in types, I can see that images, JPEG images, there's a one Castle Rig 800 JPEG. It's left the original on the disk. I haven't lost the original. It's made a copy and imported it into this notebook. But it's not showing me the picture and I want to show it. Well, that's because I'm in edit mode. So let's come out of edit mode. I click this tick box here to come out of edit mode. And there we have it. There's my picture. So that's great. I've managed to get a picture inside of one of my tiddlers. But what good is that to me? If I close this out, it's disappeared. Oh, maybe it's in photographs. Let's just, no, look, nothing. It's not in photographs. And the reason it's not in photographs is because this tiddler photographs that we made last week doesn't know anything about the photographs inside this file yet. Let's tell it how to find the photographs inside of this notebook journal file. Now, in order to do that, I need to write a little bit of code inside this tiddler, a little bit of programming code. Now, it's very straightforward. And I don't pretend to understand the code exactly, but what I do know is that I can copy paste this code around and it works wherever I put it. So it enables me to do all kinds of little tricks. Let's have a look at this code. Now to enter anything into a tiddler, we should go into edit mode. So here's our edit button here. Click on that and we're in our edit mode. And this is the code that I needed to add inside of photographs. It's a list. It's going to make a list. And the things that are inside this list are here. Now, the important bit to look at here in particular is this bit here, tag photograph. This is saying that it's going to make a list of tiddlers that has the tag photograph. I obviously haven't got this right because look, there's nothing in there. But wait a minute, I forgot to tag my Castle Rig Tiddler with photograph, didn't I? I didn't tag it. So let's find it. Well, if I go here to Recents, this is a very useful tab. It shows me all the recent Tiddlers that I've accessed or looked at. And there's our Castle Rig Tiddler. So click on it and it opens it up again. So you can't lose things easily here. You can always go back to your recents and have a look for it. Or you could do a search here. If I type castle, look, it comes up with the matches and there's the castle rig tiddler there. So here it is. I made this, but I didn't tag it photograph. How do I tag it? Well, I go into edit mode and under here we have this thing called tag name and I'm going to add that tag photograph and hit enter. It's now created that tag. And if I click on the tick box to say, OK, we can see the tag is attached to this tiddler. And if I go down, as if by magic, it appears in the photographs tiddler. So this photographs tiddler is going to show me any tiddlers that I make that are tagged with photograph. Let's make another one. Let's test this, this theory. I'm going to click the plus button. It comes up to say new tiddler. I'm going to put test tiddler tagged. And I'm going to go to tag name. Oh, it remembers my tag. So I'm going to click on photograph. That makes it a lot easier. I'm not going to put anything in this. I'm not going to put a picture in. Let's see. Click there. It's now saved it. And let's go down to photographs. And there it is. Look. Test tiddler tagged. So this is going to be, this tiddler is going to be a list of every entry that is tagged with photograph. If I delete this tag from here, let's see if it disappears. So I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to click this cross next to the tag that deletes the tag off of this tiddler. There, it's gone. I'm going to click the tick box to save that change. Now, will it be in that list of photographs? No, it's gone because this is only showing me tiddlers that are tagged with photograph. So you can see using this technique, I can make lists of all kinds of things. We're going to come to that 
again later. Let's get back to adding photographs. So here's my photograph. Now, we'll remind ourselves how we put that in there. We dragged the photograph from my hard drive into this area and it asked me to import it. I imported it and it put this code in for me. Let's see if I can put my own in. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it underneath, but I'm going to change the name to something else. So let's change the name. If I go to my hard drive, let's have a look in my hard drive here. Um, ah, I've got this one called logiehouse.jpg with no spaces. This one. Let's see if I can add that by just typing it in here. Logi house. Now, do you think it will display that picture of Logi house here? Remember what I did when I dragged in this picture. And think about what I haven't done with this picture. I've never dragged it in, have I? Let's tick the box and there's nothing. Just a broken link, look. Now the reason there's a broken link is because I do not have this picture inside my notebook file. So it doesn't know it exists. If I want to see which pictures I actually have inside my notebook file, I can come over here to the More tab, select More, and go to Types. And here, under Image JPEG, I can only see one photograph. I don't see the Logie House one. So in order to display the Logie House one, I would have to drag it into this Tiddler, right? Or into a Tiddler. It doesn't have to be this one. Any will do because any of them will import that picture into my notebook file. But this gives us a problem. If I go back to my finder here and look at my Logie House JPEG, I can see that it's nearly nine megabytes in size and it's huge. Here it is, 4,596 pixels wide by 3,000 high. That's huge. I don't want this great big file inside of my notebook. So how else can I reference it? Well, I can actually literally reference it in here and it will look at the hard disk and display the file that's on the hard disk. Now, in order to do that, I need to know where this file is on my hard disk. So I can right click, I can go to the information and I can say, where are you? And here it is here. If I copy that folder path and paste it down here, I can see that that is the folder path to this file. So let's put that folder path in front of logihouse.jpg. I'm going to just cut that and I'm going to paste it in there and I need to add an extra forward slash to separate the last of the folder names with the actual file itself. So now I'm saying, okay, show me the image that's at this location. Let's see if it can do that. Yes, it can. Look at that. So the difference between these two pictures is this one is actually imported into my notebook and this one is on my computer, not imported into the notebook. This means, of course, that if I'm looking on my phone at my notebook, I won't see this one because my phone doesn't know anything about what's on my computer but my phone will see this one because it's imported into the notebook. So it is also on the phone. It's on the notebook in the phone because they're synchronized. The notebook is synchronized. Let's see what else we can do with these pictures. I'm going to go back into edit mode. Now I can actually choose the size that I see this picture at. So if, if I go in here, if I look after this image, IMG, I keep saying image, but it's actually IMG. If I put a space and then width equals 300, it will display the castle rig photograph at 300 pixels wide. Let's do the same with this and make this 400 pixels wide. Width 
equals 400. Just for fun, just so we can see the difference. There we are, 300 pixels and 400 pixels. So this gives me options. It allows me to manipulate a little bit what size these photographs are going to appear in my tiddlers. So it's very useful to be able to reference files on your hard drive in your notebook. The downside, of course, as I've mentioned, is you can't see them actually on your phone. But I don't mind that because I do most of my work on the computer. And when I'm in the field, I'm literally really adding notes about the photographs I'm taking. I may be actually inserting a photograph from my phone just to remind me of the place I'm at. But when I'm doing most of my grunt work, if you like, manipulating or editing photographs, I do that on my computer. Talking of which, how do we actually open a photograph into some editing software? Well, first of all, I can delete this beginning bit here, the IMG and the width and so on. Let's take that out. So now we have this link, which is just two square brackets, the name of the file, including the full folder path. Let me just delete that there. It shouldn't have a slash at the beginning. The name of the folder right down to the picture itself and then close with two square brackets. Now that should create me a link. And here's the link, look, uh, but it's in italics. So that means I, it does not know where it is. Well, if I click on that, it's going to try to create a tiddler look because it thinks it's, um, that I'm trying to create something locally inside the notebook and I'm not. So I'm going to close that and not create that. Somehow I need to tell my notebook that I want this file to be opened outside of the computer. And in order to do that, I just have to type the word file, colon, slash, 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 and they're forward slashes. Now, if I click OK, now look, it's not in italics anymore. It knows where that file is, and I can actually click on it, and it opens it up in whatever software I'm using that's connected to that kind of file. In this case, it's preview, but if I had set Photoshop, for instance, to always open my JPEGs, then it would be Photoshop that would have opened then. That's great, but this is very clumsy. I don't like this long, weird file name thing going on here. I'd rather it just said something like, um, open photograph Logie House. Let's change this to say that. And this is how you change that. So in front of the word file, I'm going to type in exactly what I want it to say to open this file. So let's see, open photo of Logie House. And then I'm going to add the pipe character. Now the pipe character doesn't look like a pipe. It's nothing to do with tobacco. It is the vertical line character. You'll find it somewhere on your keyboard and it's literally just an up and down straight line. Now, this initial part that I've typed in will be the part that's shown in the link. Let's try it out. There, open photo of Logie House. Let's click it and it should open it in preview in my case or Photoshop or whatever you have set to open JPEGs. And there it is. So that works a treat. So that's how we add photographs either by importing or by referencing them on the computer. Once you've done it once, it's much easier to do it again and again because you just have to change the name of the picture. So here we have this part here. If I just take us back to showing this file. So now it's showing the Logie House by reference. It's not imported into the notebook. And now if I want to create another tiddler with a different photograph in it, I just copy this. So I've always got this copy and I add it to a new one. So this is going to be rose in a bottle. And I'm going to paste down here. I'm going to paste in 
this Logie House one, but I'm just going to change this name here because I know if I go back to my finder, I know that here I have another picture in this folder, Rose in a Bottle. So let me just change this name, Rose in a Bottle. And assuming I've spelt that correctly, yes, there it is. It shows it. And then remember, we're referencing this on the computer. I haven't imported it. It was rather big. Let me make it a bit smaller. 400 is nice. And I'll add some text above it just to give me some idea of what it is. This photograph was used to demonstrate and there the text has gone above it. So you can see how this starts to get useful. Next week we're going to see how we can add our developers and our processes to these photographs. So we're going to start to interlink all our information in our second brain. Thanks ever so much everybody for watching today. Give me a thumbs up and like the channel. Also, my patrons have already got a copy of my notebook, so they'll have a lot of this information already in it and a lot more of the stuff that I put into my notebook. So thanks so much to my patrons and I'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.